this video, I'm going to talk about a very specific organism that is da 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 da, surprise, not an algae. I'm talking about spirulina. Spirulina is the common name for a group of organisms under the umbrella Arthrospira, which is named for its spiral shape. It's also sometimes referred to as a blue-green algae because it contains a blue and a green pigment. But the name is a little bit misleading because technically speaking, spirulina is not an algae, it's a cyanobacteria. It's just been recently reclassified, so a lot of people still refer to it as an algae. Let me explain to you where that confusion is coming from. So spirulina conducts photosynthesis, which is really only something that algae and plants do, not so much bacteria. But at the same time, spirulina doesn't have a nucleus, which is the part of an organism that contains the chromosomes and it's encapsulated in a little membrane. And that makes it a prokaryote. And the golden rule is all prokaryotes are bacteria. So no nucleus beats photosynthesis. Spirulina is classified as a cyanobacteria. The simple version of this is it looks like an algae, it behaves like an algae, but technically speaking it's not and I probably will continue to refer to it as an algae throughout those videos because it's pretty much on the border. Cyanobacteria, like spirulina, are very curious organisms for another reason. They are billions of years old. In fact, scientists have found fossils that date back to at least 3.6 billion years and very likely the, the very first photosynthetic active organism on the planet and responsible for the first 10 to 12 percent of the oxygen in the atmosphere. And at some point several billion years ago something very important happened. Cyanobacteria were generating energy from the sun in this primordial soup when a predator cell came by and tried to eat um, the cyanobacteria and what they realized is hey you can make energy from the sunlight, that's so useful. And instead of eating it, they started encapsulating um, this type of organism and they continue to thrive in symbiosis. Scientists refer to this moment in time as the endosymbiotic event and it laid the foundation of the evolution of higher tier algae as well as uh, modern plant life. Even today, if we look at the chromoplasts, which are the little engines inside of the leaves of plants that are responsible for photosynthesis, we still see that they basically look like cyanobacteria that are encapsulated. The humble little spirulina has continued to exist for the next couple of billion years until today. And it occurs naturally in lakes in Africa, around Lake Chad, as well as in Mexico. And it's been used by the people in those areas for centuries. We know that the Aztecs used to harvest spirulina from Lake Texcoco, which is a large body of water that has been drained by the Spanish to make space for Mexico City. They've been harvesting this blue-green algae that they called Tecuitlatle, which is uh, basically the meaning of rock excrement. But the truth is that the Aztecs actually hold spirulina in much higher regard than the name suggests. Oral traditions point us to uh, runners and careers in the capital in Tenochtitlan who uh, were using spirulina cakes as a form of nutrition together with beans and tortilla and mole uh, for long distance travel. When the Spanish arrived in modern day Mexico, to them this type of blue-green algae mostly looked odd. Bernal Díaz del Castillo wrote in his 1568 memoir about a species of bread made of a kind of mud or slime collected from the surface of the lake and eaten in that form and it has a similar taste to our cheese. Nevertheless, the Spanish realized the importance of the algae to the local food system and included illustrations and drawings of the harvesting process in their 16th century ethnographic study about the people in the Florence Code. The Western world discovered spirulina when a French phycologist traveled to Africa to study the Kanembo people who live along the coast of Lake Chad. They consume dihe, which is a dried cake consisting of spirulina. 
and there's a lot of tradition and culture around this type of food with the Kanembo people. For example, only women are allowed to uh, harvest the spirulina from the lake uh, because they believe once men enter the lake, the lake turns barren. So the oldest women in the tribe are responsible for guarding the lake as well as overseeing the harvest. In the early morning hours, they walk into the lake to harvest from the surface of the lake and then they sun dry it into the dihe, a cake that's mixed with other spices and turned into a traditional sauce that's served with everything from meat to vegetables. Today, spirulina is incredibly popular thanks to its nutritional value and health benefits. But people are becoming increasingly aware of this type of algae as a potential alternative crop with a lower environmental impact and high value for its sustainability. In the next video, we're going to show you how you actually cultivate spirulina commercially and what differentiates a good product from a bad product.